Hello, this is Sophie Lawson from sophielawson.com and this is episode 86 of the Sophie Art Podcast which is a little podcast that I do about the art and things and this one is about the things it's going to be about lucid dreaming and I'm going to talk about three little lucid dreams from the past month and some of these are very little, tiny little dreams but this is why I love lucid dreaming so much, is you can have a tiny little lucid dream that can have a massive impact on you really. So that's what I'm going to be talking about in this one. If you go onto YouTube at youtube.com slash Sophie Lawson, you can watch this as a video. And I'm currently in bed with, I've got little Pete in here with me, Monty, Clive and Dennis is looking over us, watching over us making sure we are behaving ourselves <laughs> but I'm around my sister's so I'm recording it on the camera so the audio might not be as good as normal but hopefully it's good enough and that's it really my sister's got a beautiful it's a beautiful bedroom and even got little pillows here where you can write on the pillows so I wrote the word dreams on the pillows which I think is cool <laughs> but basically let's get into it you can find show notes and everything at sophielawson.com I'm still working on the website but it's going to take a while um, that's basically it really so <coughs> Dennis that means it's time for this week's podcast and little Dennis is falling out the bowl so what have we got here we've got three little lucid dreams so the, the dreams I'm going to talk about are the first one is from the 6th of November and it's called, I've called it, yeah, but who are you really? There's two dreams in one there. This, the next one is from the 8th of November, it's called, hey, I know him. That was an amazing little dream. And the third one was from last night and I've called that one the sing-along. I'm also going to talk about false awakenings. And inside it, that's basically it. So I've got my little dream diary here. And the thing with dream diaries is, so what a lucid dream, I, I often forget to say what a lucid dream is. So a lucid dream is if you're in a dream, you're sleeping, you're in a dream, and inside the dream you suddenly realise that you're actually dreaming. So you're kind of awake, but you're still dreaming. And it's quite amazing because you can start manipulating things and bringing stuff into existence you can sort of like start creating things inside the dream so instead of just being like in the dream at the mercy of the dream you can start interacting with it and because in dreams you can kind of do anything the power is, is quite amazing so I've got my little dream diary here and the thing with dream diaries is because what you do is every every night before you go to bed you write the date and what your goal is, so you're going to sleep with like a goal in mind. At the moment, my goal is Muji. So I want to meet Muji, which is this spiritual master I'm watching on YouTube. I want to try and meet him in a lucid dream and talk to him. And I've I've not achieved that yet. I've been bumping into people, but not actually Muji. But the thing is, like half the time you can't read what you've wrote. So it's a bit bonkers really but if I start with the first one so the first one was from the 6th of November and this one had had two little dreams I'm gonna I'm gonna have to read what I've wrote in my dream diary for this one because what happened was this dream was so amazing when I woke up I analysed the dream it was so amazing that I I actually didn't go back to sleep I just wrote quite a lot so I'm gonna read what I've wrote and I haven't read it since I wrote it, so it's been a few weeks now. But the first little dream, so, so what happened was I had a dream, a lucid dream, and then I woke up, I wrote it down, I went back to sleep and I had another lucid dream. The first one was a little one, so it was really weird. I was in this dream and I was playing a video game with, we were, it was either, I think it was a video game. I've had that a lot, where I'm in a dream and I'm inside, of a, I'm inside of a video game inside of a dream that's happening quite a lot lately so this one I was in there with like on a battlefield with guns and what happened was I, I fired this gun 
and I, I became aware that I was dreaming because I could start controlling the bullets. So as I shot the gun, the bullet came out, I could steer the bullet like, with my mind inside the dream. And it was weird because I was, I was like becoming the bullet. That was a very weird one, that. What else did I write here? Oh yeah, I said, because my goal is looking for Muji, inside the dream, as soon as I become lucid I say, I say Muji, and I want to find Muji, and I found somebody, it was weird, they, somebody popped around a corner, who I thought was Muji, but it wasn't, it was somebody else, and then I had this feeling, I wrote here, I had a feeling that I was, there was somebody behind me, like a shadow as aspect, but I didn't wait, I didn't go any further into that when I woke up, so the next one, this is the, the main one which I'm calling, yeah but who are you really? So this lucid dream is pretty amazing. One of my goals for the previous few months has been to meet my inner child. And what I do is if I can't, if I can't do a goal after a few weeks, I will stop, I'll try to do a different goal because I think I'm not ready for that goal yet. So one of my goals has been to meet my inner child. And I wasn't getting anywhere with it. So what happened was I stopped I stopped even trying. And then what's quite funny is I had this I had a lucid dream and it appears that my inner child came to me inside the dream. But I was in such denial that I didn't even I wouldn't even though I was lucidly lucidly aware inside the dream, I, I couldn't accept that this child was me. So it's very strange. So what I've put here well, I'm actually going to go and read the little bit I wrote, so this is what I've wrote about this dream. I was, in, I was in the staircase looking down and then there was three of us. Yeah, looking down there was three of us. Someone had just tried to get to the bottom and failed. A voice said, because often in lucid dreams you will have a voice like booming out around the dream. It's as if some... To me, it feels like you're inside of a dream. It's as if somebody is outside of the dream talking and their voice is coming into the dream. Like, it's, it's really weird. Mm. It feels like somebody talking who's observing observing the dream externally and they're trying to like offer you advice and stuff. But this voice, and I normally have a, v a female voice in mine, this female voice said, if you get to the bottom, you get out. Because what happened was, we were going down these stairs, and there was three flights of stairs, but at the bottom, there was, a st there was like a door, and you, you had to get out, but everyone had been failing to get out, including me. So this voice said, <clears throat> this voice said, if you get to the bottom, you get out. And I said, the voice was an observer that had no body. I looked down and saw a new character walking down, walking down. I could see first and third person crystal clear at the same time. This was really weird because I was both the person at the top of the stairs looking down, which was, that was a third person. So I was observing. That's how I knew there was like three people at the top because I could see all three people at the top. But at the same time, the, there was a person walking down the stairs, and I could see as if I was looking out of their their eyes. So I, and it's weird because I don't even know how I was able to see that. Because you're seeing it at the same time, so it's as if you're seeing one. It's really weird, even weird to explain that. But yeah, it was a crystal clear vision. So the character made made it to the bottom. And from the observer, I was so happy, but character was trapped and thought there was no door. So the character at the bottom, they couldn't see the door. They were like spinning around in circles because the door was, they weren't looking at the door. So I had to put myself into the character fully so I could turn around to see the door. So what I did was, instead of, at that point, the, the person, the, yeah, like, it's almost like two awarenesses at the same time. So the, I was the awareness at the top of the stairs looking down and I was also the awareness at the bottom but what I had to do was I had to take the awareness from the top of the stairs and put it into the one at the bottom 
so that then I could fully control the one at the bottom. So it was like I was looking out of the, the character at the bottom of the stairs, but I wasn't controlling them at that point. It's really weird that. So I, once I got to the bottom, I could then turn that character around, but I was no longer at the top, so I only now had a first person view. So I went out the door, I went outside, and the dream, it, the dream suddenly went into like a black and white. If you've ever played a video game called, there's a video game called Limbo, and it's like, it's two sort of tones, so you've got like a black, everything is either black and one colour, but this was black and white, and everything was created as if it was 2D, so it looked like I was in a 3D world, but everything was 2D, it was really weird. Basic shapes, that's what I wrote, and I said, the cam... The camera vanished. Oh yeah, that, that's what, that, what I mean by that is I lost third person view. I was now only first person. And then what I put is light from eyes is creeping in the... Oh yeah, that was really weird. I was, I was inside this world. When I went into the third, first person, I was in this new dream world. But I had my, my waking body my physical body, I must have had my eyes slightly open because there was, it felt like light was coming in through my eyes into the dream so I had to I had to actually shut my eyes, my physical eyes and to block out the light <laughs> it's really weird so in that, you've, you've almost got like three awarenesses at once there you've got the awareness of this like looking at third person you've got the first person awareness and then you've also got this awareness of your physical body. Plus you've also got this voice like booming out above as if there's another thing of observing everything. So it's almost like you've got three awarenesses that you can be aware of, but there's something else which is above that. It's very strange. So I had to shut my eyes. I had to shut my physical eyes to get that and then the light went away so that I now could see clearly. I saw two walls, yeah, angular and ripped apart. It looked very. It looked as if somebody. Had, it looked as if somebody had gone into this dream world with like a sword and just sliced the scenery. And so what happened was the scenery separated, but because it was only two tones, it was like you now had two basic black shapes on like a white background. It was a really cool visual effect. This world. And then at the end of this little thing, these two little shapes, there was a couple, a man and a lady. I put my focus on them and then they walked around the corner out of sight as if they wanted me, as if I, yeah, it was as if I had, it was as if my looking at them had made them move. But it also felt like they wanted me to follow them, but for some reason I didn't follow them. Again, when you're lucid, you're not... Well, I do know what happened, because I was thinking I'm going to go over there, but then I looked over here and I saw something else, That's, so I went over there, but I, f I had this feeling that they were my mum and dad, for some reason. But before going over to them, I turned to my right and saw an arcade, video games. <laughs> I love my video games. So I looked and there was a, there was a big row of bike games, so you get these you get these bike games in the arcade where you can sit on the bikes so it was a big long row of those and what was it here yeah they were they were made of wood which is a bit weird big row of bikes and I went towards them and there was two people loads of empty bikes there was one adult watching over and a little boy sat on the bikes not playing he had his head he had his back to me so I spun him around and he was black. He was, he was a little black boy and he had like a puppet mouth. Yeah, it was really weird. Really weird. But he was a little black boy with a puppet mouth. And I said, who are you? And he said, you. That was all he ever said. He said it about three times. I said, who are you? He said, you. I said, yeah, but who are you really? He said, you. So I wouldn't believe him. So, what's it say? I can't... I can't remember the other two. Yeah, I, oh yeah, because I said I said a, a few more things, but I can't remember. But 
whatever I said to him, he always just said you. And I'll put here, I could not accept he was me. As I thought him, as I, because as he said, he said I'm you, I couldn't accept he was me because I was inside of the dream I'm thinking, he can't be me because he's black, I, I'm not black, and he also had that little wooden mouth. And I thought that was different to me. But when I woke up, I realised he was me. So he wanted me to acknowledge him, but I didn't. Which is quite sad, in a way. But the thing was, I, I said, I thought he's different to me. Yeah. Hmm. What's really weird is, as I woke up and I've, I've wrote about this, I've realised inside of the dream, I, I thought he's different to me. He's not like me, so he can't be me. But I've thought my inner child... I never felt like my inner child was me because I'm transgender, because I was transgender growing up. So I was a little boy, but I was really a girl. So it's kind of that same thing where the little boy isn't me. So it's in... I don't know if I'm explaining that right, but like the little, the little black boy isn't me. He's different to what I am. But the little boy, when I was a little boy, wasn't me because I was different to what I am, which is a I should have been a little girl by a little boy. So it's like, it's almost like me not acknowledging the little boy being a black boy, me not acknowledging that I was the little black boy, is almost like me not acknowledging me being a little boy as a child. So he just wanted me to acknowledge me and I was blind to the, to the fact, maybe if I had he would have brought colour to the dream scene. Because I thought maybe if I had accepted him, the dream would have suddenly lit up. Can't remember what happened next, but yeah, yeah, a block, a block went missing, but I had a string of false awakenings. They seemed so real, I never realised until after I'd woken up. I'd wrote the dream out three times before finally waking up and writing it out. This is why I've forgotten some of the bits. There's, there's like two bits. There's two things that I said to him, I can't remember what I said, because I remembered it, wrote it in my dream diary, and then what, what happened was I realised I, I hadn't woken up. <laughs> I was still asleep, writing in my dream diary, and what happens is every time you write something in your dream diary, if you're in a false awakening, you start forgetting what you've, what you've wrote. So by the time you finally wake up, sometimes you can forget lots of what, what happened, which makes me think... Because this has happened so many times now, I'm starting to wonder whether false awakenings are some way of the dream trying to wipe your memory. Yeah, it's almost like maybe you, it's either some part of you is sabotaging yourself from waking up because it doesn't want you to remember what, what you're seeing in the dreams. Or maybe you're just not ready to remember this yet, so you're sort of having a false awakening to wipe it. I'm not sure. So that was that, and then I put it here. Do false awakenings stop us from remembering? I mean, is it is it the mind's trick to make you think you've woken up, get the dream wrote, then forgot about it, but you really hadn't, and so you wake up for real and don't remember the dream? And I put it here. I I forgot by chunk. Yeah, I I forgot a big chunk of it because I remember waking up in the false awakening. And then I put. I love that I spent weeks trying to find my inner child, only for him to come to me when I stopped trying and then I didn't even acknowledge him. <laughs> I thought that was quite funny. I thought it was really funny. But this was such a powerful dream. Because when I had that realisation, when I had that realisation that I hadn't acknowledged, I hadn't accepted the little boy being me in the dream, it was almost as if the dream had set him up as a little black boy because it was so strange and not me that it would allow me to think about it when I woken up and maybe that was such a strong thing that that allowed me to remember it through the false awakenings so like maybe the things I forgot during the false awakenings maybe the stuff I forgot wasn't actually that important I've got this little mo like little little mantra that I repeat all the time and it's because sometimes if I'm in the middle of a meditation I might have a thought pop into my head, which I feel, I think this is so important, I need to write it down, but I want to stay inside the meditation. So what I say is, 
I always say, if it's important, you'll remember it. And then what I do is I'll, I'll just let myself forget it so that I can stay in the, in the meditation. And then once I've waken up, once I get out of the meditation, if it's important, I'll remember it. That, that allows me to just stay in the meditation because sometimes I think you might be in a meditation and a thought pops in, you think it's really important, but it's actually your mind trying to distract you to stop you being in, in the meditation. Like another one of the mind's tricks. So that's my way of dealing with that. What have, what have I put here? Du, 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 du. Yeah, I can't read after this. <laughs> but that's basically it. So that one was my little inner child. I love that one. And then the one on the one on the 8th of November, which I've called Hey, I know him. This one is another. This one is quite a little one, but it was amazing. So I was in I was inside just a regular dream and I was on this strange location. It was like a corner of a street. I woke up I think I properly woke up, I then went back to sleep, but I found myself back in that same location and I thought, hang on a minute, I've just woken up, I'm now in the same place and that allowed me to become lucid. So the fact that I'd gone back into the dream, that's what triggered me to become lucid. And what happened was I looked up, and this is something else I've noticed in a lot of, a lot of lucid dreams, if you look up at the sky in lucid dreams, you have like the most beautiful skies you will ever ever see they do look like works of art so you, you have skies that are filled with like millions of stars and they're all shining different colors and they're like they're almost it almost feels like they're throbbing all these stars so I saw these really beautiful bright pink stars and I thought these are these are beautiful stars I might I might read what I wrote, but yeah, what what I did was I saw I saw a light in the in the sky. It was like a it was a I think it was a pink. It was either pink or yellow, was it? <laughs> yeah, it was a pink one, a pink and blue. So it was a pink and blue. Like it looked like a wormhole again. So I, what I did was I focused on it, and by focusing on it, I was able to start moving towards it. And I thought to myself. Again, it's just like a previous dream I had. I spoke about this on one of the other podcasts. I had this dream where I saw a, a yellow like wormhole, and if I focused on it, I could go into it. So the same thing was happening. But again, I was going really slowly. So I started trying to swim towards this light in the dream. And I thought in my head, you don't have to do that. All you've got to do is focus, and you can... Like teleport there, but as I'm making my way towards it, I'm in. I'm covered in this. I'm inside this field, and it's got all these cardboard cutouts of like Shiva. <laughs> really weird. So like Shiva is like these Buddhism. They're like deities from the Buddhism. So like they're some of them are almost like gods and demons, but this field was full of all these cardboard cutouts of these deities and as I was moving towards the light I was like knocking into all these cardboard cutouts and knocking them over. <laughs> very strange. That was that was very weird. And then the next thing I know I'm straight inside this in this hole <clears throat> and pop. At that point I've it's almost as if I've teleported into another another reality just like that other dream where I felt like I teleported into somebody else's reality and just like that one this one was filled with self-aware characters or dream figures so people inside the dream who I'm convinced have their own consciousness separate from me and it's like they were waiting for me so there was, the, there was two that I remember distinctly there was a lady and a bloke so I've, I've gone into this light I've popped into this new dream scene which feels to me like an alternate reality and I've got beside me this lady who felt just like a nurse like you know when you're in a, in a nurse in the hospital or in um, yeah waiting for an operation and you've got the nurse looking after you 
and she's you feel sort of comforted by them. She felt like that very motherly feeling. I really loved that that character, that, that lady. But she was like looking after me, and she's in this room. It was like I was in a, an art class, but it, it wasn't an art class. It was full of creativity. So lots of creativity. Again, another thing that I can't really explain. There was people, loads of people, and they all felt like just regular dream figures. So they didn't feel like they knew that they were in a dream. Almost as if they were just, yeah, sleeping. But they were all, loads of them sitting at desks, creating different types of creations. But some of them seemed to be creating music, but 3D versions of music. I can't really explain it. It's as if they were manifesting music into physical objects. Really weird. And I just thought, that's, that's quite amazing. But I started looking around this room, because this lady, she said, I can't, I can't quite remember what she said, but she wanted me to find the sacred creation that is my destiny. And she said, right, look around, which one is it? It's almost as if they were doing an experiment to see if I could find this sacred piece of like creation or something. And what happened was they, it felt to me like they had a bunch of objects that could have been this thing. And what I did was, I was looking around this room, one of them was this little mask. It was like, it was a, a mask that was moving. So, yeah, it was a 2D mask, but the mouth was moving. So I pointed, I thought, I like that. So, as soon as I said I like that, suddenly, it disappeared from, this, from the wall, and it was on the desk in front of me. Then there was someone else, so I'm looking around, she said, okay, what else? So I turned around to, the, to my left, the wall was covered in little cartoon creations, little cartoon characters, and I said, I like those, and they appeared on, in, the front, in the desk in front of me. I then looked to my right, the thing that's weird is, at some point, it felt like, it felt like I had found the one they wanted because it felt like they were going to stop the exercise and they wanted me to focus on these objects in front of me. But I looked to my right and there's this big long glass window, again just like the other dream. And this is the weirdest thing. In this, outside the window I saw somebody from my waking, from like the waking state, walk past the window. Just randomly walk past the window. They didn't even look in the window or nothing. And who it is is it's this there's this homeless man in town who I often talk to and it was him. And I I sh I pointed to him and I said I was like really excited, I thought, hey, I know him from my from the physical reality. <laughs> I said I know him from the waking state. And then what I did was I was so like excited that somebody from my waking state was inside this dream. I said, I just, I just shouted out, does everybody in this dream, does everybody here know that we're inside of a dream? At which point I looked around and behind us was this, if this is one of, this is another one of these self-aware characters. It felt like he, was, he had his own consciousness. It was, this, it was this old bloke sat in a chair just observing. And again, I wouldn't have known he was there had I not turned around. But it, it felt like he was, yeah, observing to see what I was going to do. And this is really funny now. When I said, does everyone know we're dreaming? I said to him, do you, do you realise we're dreaming here? <laughs> and he, he raised his eyes as if, oh God, here we go, not, not this again. And then what happened was the lady, the, this nice lady who was looking after me, she turned towards the old man and said, why have you got to be like that? So all of a sudden these two characters are sort of having some sort of yeah, little argument with themselves over my actions. So she, and I had this feeling as if this bloke knew that by me saying, does everyone know we're dreaming, he knew that the dream was going to fall apart. Because as, as soon as that, this little conversation started, the dream started to, I could feel the dream start to disappear. And I, and I said, I went, 
inside the dream I go, ah, oh, it's fading. <laughs> I was really sad. I could feel the dream fading, and there's nothing I could do about it. That something that happened at the end of this, which I can't remember. There's so much that I've wrote about this dream. Yeah, what I've wrote here is, did that little, did that bloke that walked past the window? Again, it's so much like this other dream that I've talked about. I had this dream before where I was just about to get given this potion and I got distracted by this lady's breasts and I put my focus on the lady's breasts and even though I didn't fully focus on them, just the, by me talking about them, because I, I mentioned these breasts inside the dream, which that must have put my focus on them and that woke me up. Again, it was like a distraction. I got distracted by the breasts and it woke me up. It's almost like I got distracted by this bloke walking past the window and I got woken up. And I've written here, it reminded me of, if you've ever seen The Matrix, the, the guy who makes the, ma the Matrix, he's, he puts Neo into The Matrix and he, there's a, a lady in a red dress and Neo looks at this lady in the red dress and gets distracted by her. And the only reason she's in that, in that inside the matrix is to be a distraction, to see if you can be distracted or not. So I'm wondering whether this is what's happening here, and maybe he was raising his eyes because he's thinking, you're not ready yet, are you? <laughs> Something like that. But I love the little, what I put here is, I love the little shivers. Something about that. So what happened, what happened at the end? Because something happened. The old guy... Yeah, he seemed like a some sort of master thing. Others seemed like scientists, as if they knew, as if they knew not much. <laughs> oh yeah, as if they knew there was not much time to work this out. So it was me, the lady, this bloke behind me. But there was other, there was other characters behind me, who felt like scientists. As if that's what made me think they were doing an experiment as if they had pulled me into this place for, for some sort of experiment and I'm convinced the end of this one went into a false awakening something happened at the end yeah falling into... Huh. so so random some of these dreams but the main thing to take away from that for me was once again I got distracted and these... Con when you get into a lucid dream with figures who are consciously aware, independently of you, that is, it's one of the, it's one of the most amazing feelings, because you know, at that point you know you are inside of, you're inside of a separate reality, which is as real as this one, I'm, I'm convinced of that, but again, I just, I, w I woke up from that thinking, well what was they trying to make me find? But then you can also spin it and say maybe he wasn't trying to find anything. It was just, it was just a test to see if you, be, you would be distracted, and I, I failed it again. But I've learned a lot from that. There was another dream I've wrote about down here. Oh yeah, this was a weird one. So I had a dream. I had a dream. This was like another one with, as if we were playing a video game. But it felt like there was about four of us in a group. And we were, it felt like we were at the end of our lives and we had to make a decision about what we were gonna, where we were going to go next. And we had complete free will about where we were going to go. But what it was was, <laughs> what it was was, what it was was, was it was, <laughs> no, what it was was, <laughs> oh that's funny, what it was was was, what it was is there was a, or a light, it was, again, like little portals. You had you had this thing over here which was a light. It was like light, and a thing over here that was like darkness. And everyone in the group just assumed you had to go towards the lightness. But I had this thought inside the dream. I said, no, you've got to go into the darkness. So I went into the darkness, and it felt. I had this feeling as if I was falling backwards. Yeah, yeah, like a feeling like I was falling, and then all of a sudden I, I went into a string of false awakenings. But what was it I said about here? Yeah, as I as I was in these false awakenings and I'm waking up, again another voice, 
it beamed out and it said, the outer edge of earth is lined with false awakenings. Is it just gibberish or is it, is there some sort of wisdom hidden inside of this? Because the outer edge of earth is lined with false awakenings. So false awakenings are where you, you wake up, you wake up from a, it's normally a lucid dream. So you wake up from a dream, you think you're awake only to realise that you're not awake because what happens is this false awakening is like a 99% perfect recreation of the physical reality. So you don't realise that you've not woken up until you either do a reality check by like turning the lights on enough. So am I dreaming? If the lights go on enough, that means you're not dreaming. But the thing is you have to remember to do a reality check. So if you wake up and you don't do a reality check, you can actually fall back into a regular dream until you properly wake up. And that's how, again, it can wipe your memory. But what I'm saying is, if the outer edge of Earth is lined with false awakenings, that would so make sense about when we... Because if we exist separate from our bodies, so when we're born, when we're born, we are coming into Earth from, like, outside. So if we're coming into Earth from outside, and the process of going from a spirit into a physical body, if that process is going through a bunch of false awakenings, then that makes sense to me how you could go from being a spirit, which knew everything, you go through these bunch of false awakenings, your memory is going to get wiped. So by the time you finally get into the physical reality, which is Earth, you've lost your memory. So, so you, then, you become a little baby and you don't realise that where you've come from. There's, there's some sort of wisdom inside of that, I really feel like. And the fact that I, I remembered it as I, as I woke up, it kind of, it just feels like, that feels important to me. I'm not quite sure. It kind of goes into something about the next dream, which I've called the sing-along. Because this sing-along dream, I'm going to jump to the end in a minute, because this sing-along dream, when it finished, and I woke up, what happened was, as I was waking up, so I'm, I'm aware that I'm just about to wake up, because you can sort of feel your physical body you can feel yourself coming back into your physical body and what normally happens is you get this strange it's really I love this feeling it's like a fuzzy it's like a fuzzy feeling it's, it feels as if your spirit is ever so slightly out of sync with your body so what ends up happening is you're inside your body but you can feel like a, a fuzziness around your body almost like a pins and needles feeling but it's all around your entire body and I, I love that feeling I really love that feeling see, so what happens is you get that feeling but what happened last night as I'm waking up imagine you're looking at a blank a blank piece of paper or something so all you can see is this blank piece of paper imagine if you suddenly punched a hole in it you've now got like a tiny little hole about the size of a fist so and it's, it's inside that hole you can see the reality but you're still behind this sheet of paper again you could almost say it's like a little wormhole thing so what happens is I've had this quite a lot of times normally when I'm waking up from a lucid dream I'll have this thing where it's, it's like I'm looking inside of empty space and inside this little hole that's inside the space you can see you can see the reality so it's like you're, it's almost as if the, the whole physical reality is in, behind this hole. It's very strange and it's like you know that if you go inside that hole you're going to wake up for real. But there's a point when you're not inside it. So you're sort of, it's almost like you can see the whole of reality inside of a little hole. But what happens is, normally when that happens, the view that I can see is from the corner of the room. It's almost like on video games, 
you can you sometimes get this like a cheat which is called like a god mode and what it is is it's a god god mode is like you become a camera which can move in all directions so you can go up and down left and right forward and back rotate so it's almost like at that point you are a point of awareness inside of the the video game so you, with your controller you can completely manipulate where you, you can go millions of miles into the sky the only thing that limits you is if the video game has a boundary box so what happens is when when i see that it's like that i become i become like a camera inside the physical inside the physical and i can move it freely but it feels like some sort of strange out body thing but so what happened was this one because i'm i've Whenever that happens, I'm fully aware that I'm observing it and I'm aware that I'm about to wake up. So last night I was looking at it and I'm thinking, what is this that I'm looking at? So at the same time as manipulating this little camera that, inside of the thing, I'm trying to work out what I'm looking at. And what I was looking at was, I was in the corner of my sister's room downstairs and I was able to fly over the table and everything like that. Every other time that I've had it, I've always been in my bedroom back at, back home and again I've been able to fly around the room in my bedroom. So that makes me think, was I actually downstairs? Like this morning when I woke when I was as I was waking up, was I somehow viewing downstairs in like a live video feed? <laughs> I know it sounds weird. The only thing that makes me think that it wasn't that is because it was it was as if it was as if all the lights were on, so I could see everything. And at the time of this, it would have been about two o'clock in the morning, so it would have been pitch black. And so I'm not sure about that, because every time that's happened, it's always been it's always been fully lit. So I'm not I'm not sure. It's so weird though. I just wish I could. Yeah, I wish I could. Rot what I need to do is rotate the camera to look at myself. Because I've never ever seen myself in an outer body. So that would be quite interesting. Because if, if I can rotate the camera, see myself lying in bed. Oh, imagine if you could see yourself lying in bed. And at the same time as seeing yourself lying in bed, somehow start moving your physical body. And be able to move it. So you could... That would be amazing. At that point, you would, inside of this physical reality you'd be doing the exact same thing that I've talked about in that dream. So in that dream where you were, the, you were in a third person view looking down and at the same time you was a little character walking through the dream, you might actually be able to do that inside the waking state. You might actually be able to be the camera, you might be able to like observe the physical reality and at the same time be a physical being. That would be mental kind of the same thing. <laughs> yeah, it's, what you need to do is experiments. And this is what I'm doing. Every time I go into a lucid dream, the first, the first thing I do is, what am I trying to do? Which is my little goal. So if I make my goal to try to find my, my body, chances are you'll be able to, you'll be able to do it because there are no limits to lucid dreaming. The only limits are your beliefs. So that's the thing, you've got, to, you've got to believe that you can do it, because you can do it. That goes into little Bob Ross quote, quote. Little artist Bob, Ra Bob Ross, he did a little song, and one of the lines in the song, which I love, is Believe that you can do it, because you can do it. And I think that is what this is all about, is belief. Whatever you believe will become real. Beliefs are massively powerful. I'm really starting to learn that. But last night's little lucid dream, it was a little one. So how did this one start? <laughs> look at this look, right? As I'm going to sleep, what happen is throughout the night I wake up probably about five or six times and I'll just write something out and I'll go straight back to sleep. So you're writing stuff and sometimes you're writing stuff and you sort of read it and you're like, what was I thinking as I wrote that? So the first thing I've wrote 
it, I said it became real was a way of being. I have no, no idea what that's about. There's another one here, using bags of flour. Some of these dreams are so weird. But what, what, how did this one start? How did this one start? Oh yeah. So, I was in a shopping mall, trying to buy a fancy dress outfit, and I went into another part of the store. My sister was there. For some reason, I became lucid, and I said to her, do you know we're dreaming? She would not believe that we were inside of a dream. So I said, I said to her, come outside. This is weird actually, because I've, I've had a lot of dreams where I'm with my sister in a lucid dream, trying to make my sister become lucid, but she won't believe me. I wonder what that means. Because what, what you'll notice is, if you're having reoccurring th themes or stuff in a dream, it normally means something. I don't, know what, I don't know what that means. The day that me and my sister both become aware in a dream will be amazing. Because what I would do is I would wake up and I would say to my sister, did you have a lucid dream last night? Because then it might be possible that we could both have shared a lucid dream, which would be amazing. But what it was was I said to her, come outside and wait for something really weird to happen and it will prove that we're in a lucid dream. So what happened was, a few things happened which were quite weird, quite funny. But there was this music playing. This music was the most amazing music I've ever heard in my life. It was a really funky pop tune. And I kept, in the dream, I was saying, I need to remember this, this music. It, is, it was such good music, I, I just wanted to remember it. So I kept saying, remember this music, remember this music, remember this music. And I, I said inside the dream, this is the best party tune. You know, it said, this is the best party tune you'll ever hear. Somebody said that. But, what happened was, I've, I've said to myself in the dream, you must remember this, this song, it is really important. You must remember it, you must remember this when you wake up. The only, what happened was, some of the lyrics came out. The only bit of the lyrics I can remember is it said, before your friends can hear your voice, that's all I can remember. The next bit was something, something, something. Everyone was dancing. So what happened was, I heard these lyrics. I said, I've got to remember these lyrics. So, <laughs> quite weird again. Dave Crocker, one of my artist friends, who I haven't seen for ages, he came into the dream and we started dancing together. Again, I think I got so excited that I started to wake up. And I could feel myself waking up. So I've woken up. I've wrote all the lyrics down, all of them, only to realise I'm, I'm dreaming again. So I was in another false awakening. So I woke myself up again, and I've wrote the dream, I've wrote the lyrics out, only to realise I'm dreaming again. By the time I finally woke myself up and properly woke myself up, I could only remember the first line of the lyrics. And what have I put here? Upon waking. That thing again where, like, yeah, I had that thing where I'm in the corner of the room. It's very strange, because I've put it here, is this an outer body? It's so weird. I really want to know what that is. It's such a... It's got, an, it's got a feeling accompanied with it. Because you're not just in the room, you're not just in the corner of the room looking. It's, it's got a strange feeling with it. But, so what happened here was I said, yeah... I've said here, it was such a good song that I said make sure you remember when you wake up and I forgot. So that just shows you how hard it is sometimes to rem remember things from dreams. Because what, what happened was, I've started doing this thing, because I'm having so many false awakenings, I've started, wait, as I'm waking up, so as I'm waking up out of the lucid dream, I've started saying, remember to make sure you're not in a false awakening. So I'm even... I'm even now having to remind myself to remember to check if I'm in a false awakening. But even that, I'm still getting tricked by these false awakenings. Because the thing is, they're so realistic, they're so realistic that yeah, it's, sometimes it's almost impossible. Sometimes it's almost impossible to realise that you're not, that you're not woken up. So that's, that's where I'm at really. The main things I've learnt from these dreams, the 
first one, I learned that my inner child is trying to find me. Which, so next time I see a child in a dream, I'm gonna, hopefully that will trigger me to come lucid. And hopefully I'll remember that last time I saw a little child, I wouldn't believe it was me. If I can remember that, again, if it's important you remember it, when I go into the dream, if I can remember that, I'll be, I'll be able to hopefully face my inner child because I've got a feeling there's something really important that I need to talk to my inner child about because, yeah, I'm convinced of that. The second one, the hey, I know him, that was all about distractions. So again, I've, I've, got, to, I've got to improve my focus in these lucid dreams. Again, it's so easy to become distracted. So that's something else. And then the final one, the sing-along, that was just such a feel-good little song. That was, that was one of these little lucid dreams where you wake up really excited and happy. Because as I said, it was, a, it was only a little lucid dream. But when I finally woke up, I just had so much energy and excitement because it was such a happy little dream. So this is why I love lucid dreams, because you can... They are, for me, lucid dreams are the most emotional experience possible. Yeah, the I, I can't I can't think of anything. I can't think of anything as powerful emotionally as lucid dreams, and you can just learn so much from them. That's what's quite amazing, isn't it, Dennis? Huh. You can learn loads, Dennis. Little Dennis, you can learn loads from lucid dreams. But I hope you enjoyed this one. I feel like this one I've spent a lot of time processing the dreams still. But this is why, again, this is another thing about lucid dreams is... I would say to get the most out of lucid dreams, it's not just having the lucid dream. It's writing about it afterwards and like interpreting the dream because... I'm convinced every single dream, and I would say even more, no I wouldn't actually, I would say every single dream, even if it's not a lucid dream, is trying to tell you something really important, that if you can analyse it and work it out, you can, whilst you're, in the, whilst you're awake, like in the physical, you can actually improve yourself, because you're dealing with like subconscious stuff. It's quite powerful, isn't it? Lucid dreams are amazing. So I hope you enjoyed that. What have you got? You can find show notes and everything at sophielawson.com and you can find a video of this one at youtube.com slash sophielawson. I hope you enjoyed that. This week's inspirational quote, for me, this is one of the most, yeah, I would say maybe, this is one of the most amazing quotes. I think this is one of the most amazing quotes. It's by Joseph Campbell. I absolutely love Joseph Campbell. So this little quote, this little inspirational quote, I think it is absolutely key for lucid dreaming. So in my lucid dream, that thing where I said about I saw like my mum and dad, I feel like there was a, there was some sort of fear there. The fact that all the shapes were angular around them, it's, it's almost like some sort of fear there. You could almost say me not embracing my inner child is some sort of fear, even though it's a subconscious one. Meditations, you're constantly going face to face with fears in them. So what I'm learning is that fear is the key. Fear, fear is the key to... I think reaching your full potential and ultimately waking up. I think the only way you're going to properly wake up, because I'm convinced we're inside of a, some sort of dream right now, the only way you're going to wake up is to face your fears. So this little inspirational quote by Joseph Campbell is, the fear, <laughs> no it's not, the cave you fear to enter holds the treasure you seek. That is a powerful little quote, that. Because the thing is, that's there's so many amazing things about this. The cave you fear to enter 
So it's the cave that's full of something scary. Imagine it's like a dark, a dark cave. You can maybe even see two little red eyes in there. So you're terrified to go in there because what is in there? So it says the cave that you fear to enter. You fear to enter. So you have free will about whether you enter that or not. So you have complete control about whether you go in there. Are you going to let the fear stop you? Because if you do, you won't be able to find the treasure. Because it, it holds the treasure you seek. So that little thing there with the red eyes, if you walked in there, there might be this really scary little demon in there. But it's probably holding freedom. The ultimate treasure, freedom. So this little quote, the cave you fear to enter holds the treasure you seek. Joseph Campbell